This is a CNC milling machine. On this channel we have seen the LS Maker laser engraver, other 3D printers which are also CNC machine and also bits of my homemade CNC machine based on the cyclone body which is a project still in progress, so more about this in a future video. Today we will have a look at this LS Mill milling machine that has a very high precision due to the use of night lead screws and also very compact frame. It uses a DC motor drill and a very fine drill bit to engrave wood, plastic or even PCBs. And that's what I will try today, to engrave my own circuits on a copper PCB board. So let's see if this low cost engraver is capable to engrave fine tracks of my PCBs for both DIP or SND components. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the LS Mill CNC machine. It has both metal and acrylic body. Uses lead screw, step motors with both motor coupler or belt system to move the axis. It has an Arduino based controller board and could work with both spindle mill and a laser engraver since the board has output for both and there is a space here on the machine where you could mount the spindle or a laser module. Ok, first let's make an unbox and see what we have. We have aluminum bars for the frame together with white thick acrylic parts. We will have to peel this later and reveal the white color of the acrylic parts. Then we have 3 step motors and one of them already has the lead screw in place. There are also a bunch of linear bearings for the smooth rods and of course the smooth rods and the lead screws for each axis. We also have the power supply and then a cardboard box of electronics. Inside we have the main board with 3 step motors drivers and the MOSFET control for the drill or the laser module. We also have the cables for the motors and the USB cable. Then two 0.1mm drill bits, 4 rubber feet for the machine and a plastic handle. Finally we have this plastic box full of screws, washers, plastic knobs, bearings and couplers for the machine. Oh, and we also have this DC motor as a spindle. So, this is all that we have in the box when you receive the LS Mill machine. You have more photos with all the parts below in the description. That's it, let's mount this machine. I won't go step by step with the mounting process because I will leave a guide with photos below in the description and the steps are very well detailed. Anyway, first we peel the acrylic parts and then we add the linear bearings and the lead screw nuts. We first mount the Z-axis part. We add the linear bearings, the lead screw and the Z-axis step motors and then we have to test if we can move the axis with little friction using the manual rotating knob. Then using the metal bars we create the bottom frame. We add the sides and after a few more screws we have the entire frame ready. Mounting it took me around 2 hours and the guide gives me all the steps. That's it, this is the final machine. Each lead screw has a spring to reduce backlash. Also to transfer movement from the motors, the machine uses strong metal couplers or belts, so once again no backlash. The frame is very compact and strong, so I'm expecting good results. We also have the plastic knobs for the manual control for each axis and that's great. I finally connect each motor to the controller board following this schematic here. Have it in front of you while making the connections. I also add the spindle in place. Connect the power cable to the motor and then to the controller board. The controller board is placed here on the back of the machine but I removed the back plastic cover in order to see the connectors better. Connect the power supply to the machine and I power it for the first time. Now I connect the USB cable to the controller board and then to your PC and that's it. We should now take a look over the softer part of the machine. There are multiple choices for that. I first drive LSCAM software but I don't like that much. Also universal G-code sender and finally BCNC. I've used BCNC because it has auto level and that's very important when milling PCBs since the board won't be perfectly flat. Installing BCNC is a bit tricky 
but you have a full step-by-step -step tutorial webpage below. So check the description for that. You first have to install Python, then install the serial for Python, download the BCNC and then you could run it by clicking on the bcnc.p file. Ok, so now that we have the software, I first cleaned a copper PCB with sandpaper and acetone, because it was a little bit rusty. Then I've placed it on the machine table and secured it in place using the acrylic mounting supports. Now I add a drill bit and tie the screws and make sure that it will slightly touch the copper board. That will be our zero point. I don't have the spindle powered on for now. Before we go to the BCNC software, we need a file to mill. So first I've made this simple example in Easy EDA, but I haven't filled it with copper so I have only the tracks. I download the Gerber. Now I will use Flatcam to create the G-code. Links for this software and how to install it are below. Now open the top copper Gerber file. Select it and go to select it. Go to options and make sure you are into millimeters. Select the tool diameter, in my case 0.1 millimeters, and select generate geometry. Now go back to the project and select that geometry. Now go to select it and configure the G code. Select the depth, Z travel and fit rate and click generate. Now go back to project. Select the G-code file and go to select it and click export G-code and give it a name. I will name mine test file. Now prepare the CNC machine. You have to connect the probes for the auto level to the controller board. Connect the probes here on the board and clip one to the PCB and the other one to the drill bit and now we can sense the error of the board. Now go to BCNC file and select the cam of the machine and click open at a baud rate of 115 thousands. Now you could control the CNC in all directions with the controls. Open a new file and select the test file G-code that we have just created. There you have it. Now let's level the board. Go to probe and select auto level. Now select here margins to define the printing size and then set the interval for the probing process. My first example will be around 3 by 3 cm and I will select 5 intervals for each direction. Select the fit rate for the motors and click the scan button. The machine will start scanning the board and the error values will be printed on the screen for each point. This might take a while. Once finished, click the zero button and we are done. I go up 1 mm on the Z-axis to make sure that I won't touch the board. Disconnect the alligator clips from the probe and then connect back the spindle power supply. Now I press start and observe the magic. The machine starts milling all the tracks of my circuit. The first test that I did had some depth problems, so I've increased the milling depth a bit and the second circuit turned out quite good. The tracks are 0.22 mm and I could even use SMD components. In this case I have a shortcut here, but that is very easy to fix using a cutter. This is another test with the LM358 DIP amplifier. I've drilled the holes and now I could place it here and solder the components. This here is a very good example of the Z-depth error. I could go too deep or not deep enough. After milling always check for shorts with your multimeter before you start soldering. I have to say that I've made a lot of tests changing the flat cam settings, testing the auto level, feed rate, tool diameter, copper milling depth and so on till I've got good results. So I recommend you to buy a few of these copper boards and then start testing and write down the good results till you get used to the machine. On this board I have a few more examples. Here I have some track widths and as you can see below 0.2 mm the track can be milled. I've also tried some SMD components and the results were pretty good. Here I have two SMD op-amps and some 0.805 SMD capacitors and the tracks are 0.22 mm, so these are quite good results. I've also milled an Arduino Uno layout. 
The entire process took me around 20 minutes, including milling, drilling the holes and cutting the board outline. The board looks nice and after testing for shorts, pass another time some sandpaper and clean it, I solder the components and this is the final board. I have to say that for this first test the board turned out quite well. Now the board looks a bit messy because I had to use a lot of flux so solder will stick only to the pads that I wanted. I have the Atmega chip, the 16MHz crystal, SMD capacitors with a size of 0805, voltage regulators and the female pins all around the board. I upload a blink code using the FTA programmer and now, when I power the board with 12 volts, the LED is blinking but it is on the other side of the board. I have some wire connections because this was a one layer mill. Also you should invert the layout before milling, otherwise you will end up with the buttons, LEDs and all the components on the bottom side. But I'm more than happy with my first results with this machine. I will leave in the description of the video some links for types of drill bits like these ones that I've used to engrave my PCB. Well guys that's it for this week, but here's what I'm gonna do. I will prepare more tests for another video because I don't have enough time for now. Mounting, testing and installing all the good softwares took me some time. In a future video we will see more results and mill a good PCB, maybe double layer, start to finish and also coat it with this kind of UV sensible mask. For now these are the results. The Elisk mill works quite good. I like the manual control knobs. The lead screw with anti-backlash springs gives good precision. The frame is very strong and compact and also looks pretty good with black and white colors and these metallic blue details. It is a little bit tricky to use for PCB milling, but if you were to engrave other materials that don't require this much precision, it is much easier. Just use the LSCAM software that the machine provides. But for PCB you will definitely want to use BCNC with auto level and some extra features. Also have in mind that a better spindle with higher speeds would give you much better results. This is one of the cheapest spindles that you will find on the market. I hope that you like this review and PCB mill example that I've made for my Arduino board and all the other tests. If so consider helping me on Patreon and if you do that you will be able to see my videos days before the YouTube release. Stay tuned for future PCB engraved videos with more examples of what this machine could do. You have links for the software, install guide, mounting guide and links if you want to buy this machine below in the description. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if so don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember if you consider helping my projects check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.